Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Bountiful God, we approach your throne of grace with thanksgiving. We come into your presence with praise. For you are the only true, wise, and all-powerful God. All creation speaks of your brilliance. The heavens declare your glory. We thank you that you made a beautiful earth and put us into it to enjoy life with you and each other. Forgive us, Lord, that we are so distracted by our work and careers, our money and possessions, by social media, world affairs, and other people, that we fail to make you the priority in our lives, and we fail to give you the honor and praise for who you are, for all your blessings to us, and for the work of your hands. We thank you, Lord God, that you are slow to anger 
and abounding in love. And so even as we come asking you to forgive us for taking you for granted, forgive us for not appreciating all that you do on our behalf. We pray that you would have mercy, that you would pardon and forgive us and allow us to have a time of meeting you in praise and worship. We thank you, Lord God, that it is your blessings that enable us to get through from day to day. It is your protection that keeps us safe at night when we put our heads down on our pillows. It is your love and your grace that allow us to live to see another day. So Lord, accept our praise, accept our prayers, hear from highest heaven, hear from the inward part of our hearts, and answer us, Lord. May we be well aware of your presence among us this night and even forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed When you are discouraged thinking all is lost Count your many blessings, name them one Blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? You are called to bear. Count your many blessings, every
The scripture lesson is taken from Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals, in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth on that very day their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He upholds the orphan and the widow. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Dear Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for you are 
such a wonderful God. You are a God worthy of all praise. You are a God who helps us and supports us, who saves us, who heals us. We bless your name this night. And I pray that your Holy Spirit would guide us into all truth. Help us as we search the scriptures to learn more of you and your love. May it be a blessing to us all as we hear from you. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Many years ago, I suffered with excruciating pain in my eyes that would wake me up every night. I came to know 2 a.m. as a dreaded time because the pain would wake me abruptly and I would have to get up and sit still in bed for at least an hour or two before being able to get back to sleep. One Saturday morning, the pain did not abate, and at 8 a.m., instead of being able to go to work, I had to go to an ophthalmologist. My normal ophthalmologist did not work on Saturdays, and so I got a second opinion with a different one who was able to give an immediate diagnosis because his specialty was the cornea. You see, I had corneal erosions, damaged areas of the front of both of my eyes, and these were very, very painful. The procedure to get the cells to stop lifting up and to get them to heal also caused tremendous pain when the local anesthetic wore off. I would return home and sit in bed for 24 hours after that procedure, not even being able to eat because to move my face muscles increased the eye pain. Although I was warned that the condition could worsen over time, I prayed that God would heal my eyes. Initially, I used eye drops up to eight times per day. But over time, and with the use of special plugs to hold my tears in and not let them drain out, my need for eye drops is now down to just at night. I use them now once per day. My eye plugs washed out about three years ago, and my eyes have remained stable and pain-free. I give God all the praise and all the honor for having brought healing to my eyes. I have many reasons to praise and bless God. So many instances in my life when he has healed me, saved me from accidents and even death, lifted my spirits when I have been sad or in despair given me discernment and insight about people or particular situations, granted me wisdom and understanding in an area where I could be of help to someone or teach someone else. As long as I live, once I have breath, I will praise the Lord. The psalmist in Psalm 146 gives us encouragement throughout our lives to keep on praising God. He starts with an exhortation to us to praise the Lord, not just for one day or one miracle, but in verse 2 he said, I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God all my life long. This comes from someone who has meditated on his God. There is joy to be found in life when we reflect on the goodness and the faithfulness of God. The psalmist points out in verses 3 to 6 that our fellow human beings 
those people come into our lives and they come and go. Their influence and power and plans disappear when they die. In contrast, God is powerful, the one who made heaven and earth and everything in them, and God keeps faith forever, not for a limited time. He's trustworthy. He's the one in whom our help and hope are found. In verses 7 and 8, the psalmist rejoices that our God is one who champions the cause of the poor and the oppressed, who feeds the hungry, sets prisoners free, opens the eyes of the blind, lifts the downhearted, upholds the orphans and the widow. Amazing that hundreds of years before Jesus came, we find a psalm that speaks much like Isaiah's prophecy concerning the Messiah, Jesus Christ. Isaiah 61 and verses 1 and 2 say, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn. So we see the similarities in both Psalm 146 and Isaiah's prophecy. These both spoke about Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior, in his earthly ministry among us, fulfilled the, the words of those prophecies. Jesus fed the crowds of four to five thousand. He had compassion on hungry people, even after spending hours healing and teaching them. He fed them. He made sure that they did not go home hungry. He delivered so many from demoniac oppression, both adults and children. He healed those who were physically blind, like Bartimaeus, and brought light and clarity to those who were spiritually blind and needed to be delivered from darkness, like Nicodemus, a leader of the Pharisees who wanted to understand God's message through Jesus Christ and approach Jesus by night in order not to be seen by his colleagues and the regular people. In verse 8 of the psalm, the psalm is said that Jesus lifts up those who are bowed down. People can be bowed down either by sickness, emotional distress, or sin. I am lifted. I am encouraged to see the number of women that Jesus lifted up out of that state. He healed the elderly woman in the synagogue, bent over for years, probably a condition of her spine, where she would have had vertebral fractures, causing her spine to bend forward. This is known medically as kyphosis. He straightened her spine again. He lifted her physical body up, and in so doing, he lifted up her soul. Jesus also lifted the woman caught in the act of adultery. She was brought to him, no doubt, cowering in fear by men who wanted to stone her to death for her sin. When Jesus had spoken to the men, and over time they had left the site where Jesus was, eventually only the woman remained with Jesus. Rather than condemn her, Jesus asked her to leave her life of sin. She was given a second chance in life a second chance to live an upright and good life, 
not a life bowed down by sin. And the Samaritan woman at the well, who was bowed down by a past and present condition because of poor relationships with men, Jesus met her where she was, went specifically to Jacob's well outside of her hometown to meet her, sit with her and engage her in conversation, to tell her that he was the Messiah and that she had opportunity despite her sinfulness to repent and be restored to right relationship with God, worshipping him in spirit and in truth. Our God is a God who lifts the oppressed, heals the brokenhearted, helps the sinner to be set free. Our God is a God who has compassion on the poor, the weak, and the needy, and those suffering from grief. Jesus had compassion on the widow at Nain by raising her son from the dead. She would have had no one to depend on in her older years since her husband had already died. And as a woman had no status in their society at that time and depended on her male relatives for financial support, she would have needed her son to be alive, to provide for her. Jesus raised her son from the dead and gave him back to her. What about us? What about in our present time? What about our sicknesses, our grief, our poverty, our trials? our temptations, our accidents, and our sins. Jesus Christ is the same, yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13 and verse 8. So many of us have been blessed by large and small miracles in our lives. We have been lifted from despair and oppression loneliness, and lack. We have been healed from illness, malignancy, physical and spiritual blindness. We have been set free from the chains of abuse, financial insecurity, and sin. Yet, do we give thanks and daily praise the Lord for every blessing? every breakthrough, every miracle in our lives? Do we sing praises to God all the day long, all through our lives? Do we testify and let others know that God is real, that God loves us, cares for us, and that he still heals? We must tell others that he provides and still makes a way when there seems to be no way. Some of us have had a loan or a mortgage granted just when needed. Others have received financial help at just the right time. Others have received a cooked meal, a box of groceries, a bag of vegetables, or a hamper when we were down to our last cent, or when our money was tied up paying bills. We serve a God who looks out for us, looks after us, and supports us in our trials. There are so many in our society who are frustrated and losing hope. So many who are going through trials, financial difficulties, illness, and abuse. And it is for us who know the Lord to offer them the love of Christ and give them hope and encouragement financial, emotional, and spiritual support. Even within our churches, we need to bear one another's burdens and give support and pray specifically for one another without being asked. We need to encourage people with our own personal testimony so that they know that God is real and that he answers prayer. 
Psalm 146 tells us, Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord their God. Verse 4. So no matter what life brings, we should have an inner joy because our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is one who watches over us, protects us, provides for us, helps us and supports us in every problem, every trial. He is the one who saves us from sin and the grave. There is no need to fear, no need to worry, no need to give up. Life may be hard. We are all going through so much right now. But God is faithful. He walks with us every step of life's way. And so, like the psalmist, we can declare, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Amen and Amen. Such a wonderful call.
And so, brothers and sisters in Christ, I encourage you. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Amen. for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.